Hey, what is up guys? Today we're actually going to create some kind of a message box that is going to give us general information in our game while we're playing. So general feedback, uh, just like this. Say we're placing a turret and then we want to place a turret at the same exact place. Well, it's going to say this tower spawn is occupied and then eventually disappear. And then we have some kind of stack over here so it just, um, it just pile itself. So say we could have this tower spawn is occupied, then we try to cast a spell and it says this spell is on cooldown. All that kind of good stuff just to give some feedback to our player so he doesn't mash his button and be like, this game is not working. Alright guys, that's going to be it for this video, so that's what we're going to be doing. And uh, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so just like last time, we're actually going to do some piece of UI first and then move on to coding inside of the UI manager. So. During this episode, we said that we wanted to have some kind of general uh, message box somewhere in the screen. So say our player is trying to cast a spell, but he doesn't have any more mana. Then we'd like to display some kind of feedback somewhere so he knows what's going on. He's just not there smashing the button being like, wait, why is this game not working? He actually has a feedback saying uh, what we want to tell him. Okay, so we will go ahead and inside a few of the uh, UI route once more. I am going to declare myself a canvas actually, so a new UI canvas inside of the UI root. So this is a canvas inside of a canvas. Right, this one is going to be called um, general message container because what we'll be using is, uh, we'll call our class general message. So every single message we see is going to be a general message. Now let's actually scale it down to our liking. So I will go ahead and anchor it in the center, pivot point in the center as always. Maybe uh, put 500, no actually 600 in width and I'll go for 150 in height. So this is going to be the message box uh, size. Now I will actually, I will anchor it on the uh, top side and make a margin of say minus 150. I'll also make sure the pivot point is on the top side if you're making it like this. You can position this pretty much anywhere you want. I'll be putting mine over here. So uh, I have a margin of 100 in between the top anchor and my message box. Okay, so this is going to be the message box container. Now we actually need um, to have some kind of message to put in there. So I will be making um, I will be making not prefabs. I could be making prefabs. Actually, let's just go ahead and just... Uh, we know that... Well, actually, I know that I only want to have three message maximum at the same time. So I'll be making these three uh, message container right here in the object itself. So I'll go ahead and right click on general message container. I'll create myself a panel because I like panels. And this is going to be a general message. Now what I'd like to do is actually uh, back on my general message container I'll set a vertical layout group on that and uh, just to see what it does I'll duplicate a general message. So back on my general message container I will put say um, the child alignment on upper center. I will force expand only the width not the height and as for the height, I'll go ahead and uh, I'll choose a general message, so say this one, and I'll put a layout element on it, add a minimum height out of uh, 50, and this is going to be it. So this is going to be uh, one of my message right here. So if we were to duplicate this, maximum of 3, because they they have a height of, of 50, and uh, my message container is 150. All right. So um, this is all good and dandy. We have the container itself for the message. Now I'll go ahead and remove the fill center just because I want to see my message and it gives it some kind of look that I like. So uh, customize it as you wish. I'll be leaving mine like this. And now inside of that general message is going to be a new UI text, which is pretty much going to be the message itself. So um, what kind of message could we give? We could give there is already a tower, actually, um, this tower spawn is occupied, something of the sort. Now let's make sure 
that our um, our message is stretching in the horizontal axis. Actually, it's stretching in both horizontal and vertical axis. We're going to be assuming the size of this panel. Now I'll go up here, remove the left, the top, the right, and the bottom. And I will align my text in the center just like this. Now, of course, you can resize it uh, the way you want it. And um, this is going to be my message, my default message. Of course, it's going to be changed uh, when we actually play the game and depending on which situation we're in. But just for now, I will leave it like that. All right. Now, if we take a step back and we actually take a look at this, it doesn't look too, too bad. Let's go ahead and duplicate this two more times because we want to have a, a maximum of three messages. And here they are. Okay. I do not hate the result, actually. It doesn't look too bad. Now, what we need to do is actually code code for this guy. So, um, again, we'll have a function that we are going to be able to call from anywhere using the, uh, the instance of the UI manager. And this function is going to set a message inside of that general message, set the color, also set a duration. Because I want to I wanna show this message, but for a certain amount of time. And uh, you know you don't want to leave it there forever. So um, let's go ahead and open up our UI manager script in Mono Develop, if you wish. And again, we will create a new section down here. I mean, the region. And let's call this one General Messages. And the region. And let's declare what we are going to need for this. So first off, the container itself, so public game object, general message container, and we'll also need a list of a custom type, so, hmm, okay, so before declaring that list, let's actually declare our custom type, so just down here inside of the region, we're going to do it inside of the class, we are going to declare another class, so private class, general message. Now this is really, really similar to what we've did with the floating combat, not floating, yeah, floating combat decks. And uh, you're gonna see some similarities, but uh, we're gonna have a, a small a small difference for this because we don't have to actually instantiate and we don't have to pull. Because we told ourselves we only wanna have a maximum of three messages, so we're gonna, we're gonna recycle them and we know we're never actually gonna go above three messages. Okay, so inside of our class, uh, let's go ahead and declare a bool. So is active is equal to false. Let's declare a game object, which is going to be the container of the message. Let's declare a text, which is going to be the text component. Let's declare a float that is going to be the duration and another float that is going to be the last time we actually shown the message. So this is our general message uh, class. And now we can go up here and declare ourselves a list of general messages that we're going to call general messages because we are really, really original. All right. Now, what else could we need in here? We could, oh, we actually need the big function. So uh, the one we're going to be calling from outside, make sure it is public, a public void show general message. We're going to take in a string parameter which is going to be the message, a color which is going to be the color of the text, and a duration. I don't need to explain that one do I? Okay, um, inside of that general message we actually need to find which one is uh, the, the holdest message so we can actually replace that game object by uh, our new game object or actually reinitialize it with a new text value, a new duration, a new color, all that kind of good stuff. So the way we're going to do it is uh, we're going to base ourselves on the order of the children in here. So this is the first message up here. If we, since, since we, um, we have it inside of a vertical layout, say we were to disable the middle message, it would still look fine because um, it's the vertical layout makes it so it reposition it every time. So um, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we are going to get the general message of the last object in that list. So general message GM, oh, 
we get a uh, the capital M. So uh, this one is is the type. So general message GM is equal to general messages. So that's the list, and we're gonna find we're gonna find the general message where M M dot GO is equal to general message container dot transform dot get child at the index number two because we're zero base so that's the that's the very last child dot game object this is a very long line and if you are confused what we pretty much do oops remove that if you're confused what we we do is uh, we take the list and we look for the element the general message element where go is equal to the uh, third message over here to the third message go so basically we are we're looking uh, for this object okay so doing this we are going to get this very game object uh, well actually we're gonna get the general message that is attached to this very game object so what we're gonna do after that is tell him okay go back to the beginning so go back here and then next time we actually need a message we're gonna take this one and then next time we're gonna take this one and we're just gonna keep doing uh, that until forever okay so now we have the good general message we are gonna do gm dot text dot text is equal to message so we're gonna change the message of that general message then we'll do gm dot text dot color is equal to color we're gonna change the color of that text and uh, also gm dot duration is equal to duration since we are going to show the message with this function as well let's go ahead and say last show is equal to now so basically time dot time and then we'll do uh, gm dot is active is equal to through gm dot go dot uh, set active is true so we're setting the game object active okay oh and one thing we forgot is uh, the actual mechanic that I, I explained before so whenever we take this object we'd like to bump it back up to to be the first uh, index of that game object we will do it over here and I think the call is fairly simple so you do gm.geo so we're getting the game object or can we do transform actually? Okay, no, so we have to go through the game object. So gm dot uh, game object dot transform, and we do set as first set as first sibling, just like this. And this should actually work just fine. All right. So um. Da -da -da. All right. So this looks great. Um. The only issue we have right now is there is nothing inside of general message because we never actually assigned it. So we are going to go up here inside of the initialize and update and we're actually going to fill that list. So um, right after the recap information text and also the all UI .add, we're going to do general messages is equal to a new list of general messages. And after that, we'll do a for each transform t in general message container dot transform because we have to get the transform and we can't do it with the uh, the game object itself so for every single transform inside of that container we will go ahead and uh, declare a new general message so this is going to be run three times basically because we know that we only have three transform inside of the uh, general message container um, what exactly do, are we going to do here? We have to say, well, we have to declare a general message first. So general message gm is equal to a new general message. And then we'll do gm.go is equal to t.gameObject. So we're actually going to assign the game object right here. And then gm.text is equal to t.gameObject. Oh, actually, can we do it with a transform? Yeah, we can. So uh, t.get component, and we're going to get the text component. Is that correct? Let me go check real quick. So we're taking this object over here, and we're telling him, OK, you're going to be my new game object. And then uh, also get the text component. And we don't have a text component here. It's actually inside of the children. 
Okay, so let's go back in our code. And instead of doing get component, we're gonna do get component in children. Make sure there is no s uh, after the get component because this is an actual function. And it returns an array. We don't want an array, we want a simple text component. Okay. Now I think this should actually work. Um, we haven't dealt with the uh, duration just yet, but let's actually have a look if this works in game. We are going to go inside of build mode script. That's just one of the places where I'm thinking about putting one of these. And whenever we spawn a tower, if it is occupied, so over here we do, okay, is the tower spawn occupied? If it is, we simply return. Now we are going to return anyway, but we're going to do ui.manager.instance.show general message first. Okay, and this one takes in a message parameter, so we're going to do um, this tower spawn is occupied. Dot, dot, dot. We are going to give it a color, so color.red and a duration of, say, two seconds. Okay. Let's have a look at this in the game, see exactly where we're at. So our text is over here right now, we shouldn't have it. Let's go turn it off. So inside of our UI, you're going to select the three general message under the general message container and then turn them off. Leave the uh, general message container on. And now if we go over here, Actually, we have an error down here. It says the field is not assigned because we forgot to actually set our general message container. So let's go ahead and do, do just that. Drag and drop this general message container right inside of the new field. And then let's hit play once more. It doesn't pop when we press on the menu, so that's a good sign. Let's take this turret, F, F again and we get another error which says the object reference is not set to an object. Okay, so what exactly is the issue here? Okay, so my bad. Um, up here in the initialize and update, we do this general message, we create the new list, and then we create um, every single of the message associated with the game object behind it, but we never actually add it to the list, so that was a bit confusing on my part. Sorry about that. Um, general message dot add and we're gonna add GM just like this Okay, now let's go try it out I'm going to press play on this and hopefully this works now So press F once now it should be occupied press F twice It says this tower spawn is occupied and then I'll press it again and again and again 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 It doesn't go past three now. Let's actually look at the behavior over here in the hierarchy so if you take a look, you can actually see that we're taking the, the last object and then we're bumping it back um, to the first index of that container. So that's how, that's exactly how we want to work because uh, the holdest message is going to be replaced by the newest message. Okay. All right. Now, the last thing we need to do is actually make this disappear. Uh, after a certain amount of time. So let's just uh, go Where exactly we're going to go. We're going to go right here Inside the general message class and we're going to do the exact same thing we've did with the floating combat text We are going to declare ourselves a update and uh, a special update actually this is not one from unity so Call it whatever you want mine is going to be called update general message and we are going to do if is active no actually if is not active we return and if time dot time minus last show is bigger than duration that means we actually uh, we're actually past the duration time so we need to hide this and we are simply going to do is active is equal to false and then go dot set active to false all right, now let's make sure this update general message is called. So we are going to go up here in our initialize and update, find the update and after doing the uh, key code escape, we're gonna do for each 
general messages gm in general messages with an s so the the list we're going to do gm dot update general message all right so this was a little bit confusing especially with the term we've been using uh here and there but the result is going to be great and i believe um i, I believe we're done actually so let's try this out i'm going to press f and after two seconds it is gone great so that's our message that our that is um our general message box and of course like pretty much everything in this tutorial so far the art is not final we can modify that we can change the font we can change uh, the color we can give it actually we can give it a different color right inside of our code and all that kind of good stuff so guys that's going to be pretty much it for this episode. I hope you enjoy. If you learned something or if you enjoyed the video, please leave me a like. I really appreciate that. If you have any question or comment, please leave them in the comment section below. And also subscribe for more tutorials like these. Thanks again for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next episode.